Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the function of the hepatic portal system by talking about the hepatic portal vein and then the other veins that drain into this. Often when you're in a course that's discussing the hepatic portal vein or the hepatic portal system, they'll discuss the, the function of what's called a portal vein. And what a portal vein does is it connects two capillary systems. So most veins, in some form or fashion, whether direct or indirect, they will drain into the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava. But a portal vein doesn't do that. A portal vein actually connects two capillary systems. Now, that's good and all, but I don't find that that definition really helps you understand what the hepatic portal vein is or the hepatic portal system. Really, we need an example of where this would be used. And so why not use David Hasselhoff eating a cheeseburger? So he's eating this cheeseburger and there's a lot of stuff in there. Okay? In particular, there's proteins and there's carbohydrates. Now obviously, in the gastrointestinal system, particularly in the duodenum, those proteins are broken down into amino acids. Also, if there's any remaining starches, which there would be, or any kind of uh, disaccharides or polysaccharides, they can be broken down into individual monosaccharides, for example, glucose. And whenever those nutrients get to the jejunum of the small intestine, that's the middle region, they can be absorbed. So amino acids will be absorbed, and sugars, simple sugars like glucose, fructose, uh, galactose, those can all be absorbed into the bloodstream. Now the question is what happens when those nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream? Do they just go into the general circulation? No, those nutrients are going to be absorbed into the superior mesenteric vein. Other things, which we'll talk about in a minute, might be absorbed into the inferior mesenteric vein. Others, maybe the splenic vein. And ultimately, every one of those nutrients goes to this hepatic portal vein. Now, we'll come back and talk about these three veins right here, but just understand that things that are absorbed from the GI tract, nutrients, even toxins, medications, xenobiotics, all that stuff, ultimately, either directly or indirectly, goes to the hepatic portal vein. Now, what is this hepatic portal vein for? Okay. It's a portal that connects any one of these capillary beds here, whether it be in the small or large intestine or in the spleen, it connects those capillary beds to capillary beds in the liver, which are called hepatic sinusoids. Okay? So anything that comes from the GI tract, or in some cases the spleen, goes through the hepatic portal vein and it goes to the liver. And these sinusoids, I've tried to draw here with gaps in and so whenever these nutrients, whatever they are, amino acids or glucose, whenever they escape through these fenestrations, these gaps in the walls of the sinusoidal capillaries right here, the hepatocytes, which are cells that compose the liver, they're able to process those nutrients and do various things to them. Okay? Um, in some cases, they can then send those through the hepatic veins. There's a left and right hepatic vein, and ultimately those will then go into the inferior vena cava. So whenever we absorb nutrients from the diet, or we have things coming from the spleen, they don't just go into the general circulation. They first go to the liver, because the liver is going to check the contents of them. For example, did we actually ingest something that is potentially poisonous if it got into the general circulation? Well, if we did, then it should go to the liver because the liver needs to get rid of it. it needs to detoxify it. Did we absorb some kind of nutrient? Okay. Well, in some cases, those nutrients need uh, processing, and so instead of going directly to the general circulation, they're going to go to the liver for processing. So the gist here of the hepatic portal vein, before we go any further, is that anything that comes from the external environment, so that, those are things from the diet, before going into the general circulation, they need to be checked or they need to be processed, and so they go to this hepatic portal vein, which carries them to the liver. And then these sinusoidal capillaries right here have these large gaps in their walls, and then those things can escape into the liver. And then the hepatocytes there then process them, they detoxify them, and do a number of other things before potentially allowing them to go into these regular hepatic veins, which then takes them into the inferior vena cava, which represents here the general circulation. So let's now break down the function of each of these veins right here and how they relate to 
the hepatic portal system. The first one is the largest of the three. This is the superior mesenteric vein. Now this vein right here is really just this part, okay? And you can see it leads directly into the hepatic portal vein. Now there's a number of other smaller veins right here that drain different parts of the GI system, okay? In general, uh, these veins right here that drain into the superior mesenteric vein, they're really draining the contents of the small intestine and then uh, certain parts of the large intestine, which, in, which include the cecum down here, the ascending colon, and the transverse colon. So I've got this dotted line right here that's really just dividing up the regions that are drained by the superior mesenteric vein, which are what I just mentioned, and the rest of it, which is the inferior mesenteric vein. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So if we want to get really specific, here are some of the veins that drain into the superior mesenteric vein. We have the right gastro-omental vein. Uh, this is also called the right gastroepiploic vein. This really just drains the inferior part of the stomach. Um, so some things in the stomach can be absorbed directly into the system. Uh, for example, um, alcohol, ethanol that you drink in an alcoholic beverage. So that is absorbed in large part through the stomach. And so it's drained actually through this vein right here, which goes into the superior mesenteric vein. And we also have the inferior pancreatic duodenal veins. These drain some parts of the pancreas, but also the duodenum or duodenum, the proximal part of the small intestine. There's not a lot that's absorbed there, but some things, very small amounts are, and so those will drain into the superior mesenteric vein. The most important parts really for absorption are the remainder here. So the jejunum is probably the most important. This is the major site of small intestine absorption, so jejunum, veins from the ileum, the terminal part or distal part of the small intestine. Some things, including bile acids, are absorbed there. Also, the middle colic vein. So this is actually draining the transverse colon. The right colic vein drains the ascending colon. And then the iliocolic vein, this is really just draining the proximal part of the ascending colon and the cecum. Okay, So you can see all those things right there, all these veins, drain different parts of the gastrointestinal tract, but they all are draining into the superior mesenteric vein. And so all those things go into the superior mesenteric vein, which takes them to the hepatic portal vein, which then takes it to the liver. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Then we've got the inferior mesenteric vein. This is mainly responsible for draining things, whether it be nutrients, drugs, all that stuff, from the descending and sigmoid colon. So right here, I've got some other vessels right here. Let's take a zoom in on those. So the left colic vein. The left colic vein drains the descending colon. Sigmoid veins drain the sigmoid colon. Superior rectal vein, this drains the superior or upper part of the rectum. And then the rectosigmoid veins is really just draining the area uh, where the sigmoid colon becomes the rectum, so the, uh, the rectocolic junction. Okay? So if we go back and look here, notice all this area, the descending colon. Here's the uh, superior or proximal part of the rectum. And then this junction right here, all of that, if something is absorbed from those regions, those will all drain into the inferior mesenteric vein. Right? But before we go any further, we need to discuss the splenic vein. Now, the spleen is no part of the digestive system. Okay? This is not a part of the digestive system. The spleen is actually a secondary lymphatic organ. It's more part of the lymphatic system, or in some cases, the immune system. And the way it works is there's blood supply to the spleen. That's mainly through the splenic artery. And that will bring things to the spleen, like red blood cells, platelets, potentially bacteria that's been tagged with antibodies that need to be destroyed. And so those things are brought to the spleen. So what if one of those red blood cells is damaged? What if it's already served its purpose and it's old, it's defective? What if the same thing is true for a platelet? What if the spleen picks up some bacteria that's been tagged with antibodies? Well, there are cells within the spleen, immune cells, that will destroy all three of those. So red blood cells will be degraded. Platelets will be degraded. The, the bacteria that's been coated with antibodies, it will be opsonized by macrophages and degraded. And so when you degrade all of those things, what are the products? Well, mostly amino acids. 
And so those amino acids need to be recycled, and so they will be recycled to the liver. And so anything that comes out of here, so these breakdown products of red blood cells, platelets, and even amino acids coming from broken down bacteria, they will go through the splenic vein and go into the hepatic portal vein. That carries them to the liver, as we've talked about before. Now the reason I skipped to the splenic vein is because notice the inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein. The inferior mesenteric vein does not go directly to the hepatic portal vein. Rather, it drains into the splenic vein. And so then the splenic vein will carry that content to the hepatic portal vein, which then carries it to the liver. And then those things can escape through these hepatic sinusoids, which are capillaries that have big gaps in their walls, and then they can be processed by hepatocytes. And once that processing has occurred, anything that needs to go further into the general circulation will exit through these hepatic veins, and then those will go into the inferior vena cava, which of course is the general circulation. Okay, So yes, a portal vein is a vein that connects two capillary systems. For example, it could connect the splenic capillary system to the sinusoids here in the liver. It could connect these capillary systems in the GI tract to the hepatic sinusoids. Okay? But that doesn't really give you much of the function of the hepatic portal vein. Really, you should look at an example of somebody eating something, think about what has to be absorbed into the bloodstream, and then think about how those nutrients or even toxins, drugs, things like that, how they get to the liver because the liver is going to be necessary to process those and potentially detoxify those before they wind up in the general circulation. So hopefully this video will give you a good understanding of the hepatic portal vein and the hepatic portal system. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.